into the game. Oh. Match two between Entity 7 and Zeno Zenith. It's confirmed, I think. It's confirmed. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We're into match number two in the Land of Dawn. Okay, hide on bush. So it seems, all right, yeah, everything's the same. No changes whatsoever. It's Marquimio on the Esmeralda. But it's a quantum charge. Everyone goes into the front, can't do some damage. Now with the dispersion and the rotation, forcing Shocker to flicker out to safety. An early win for Entity 7. That's a very big early win. Now all they need is for Hide on Bush to gank absolutely anyone, even get a kill onto Gnarg. It's gonna be huge. I feel like legit with the start that they have winning the mid lane, Hide on Bush just needs one kill and it will turn things around for them to put more pressure onto you know Zenith. Joe also here just walking up and maybe this is why they picked up the Esmeralda to get a little bit more Pryo in lane but he is gonna have to sacrifice that lane because it seems for <laughs> he has frozen that lane. Here's the thing, my own <laughs> even as an analyst I am unsure about the real power spike of an Esmeralda. Like you just said that early is strong, mid dips a bit, the late is strong. XP is weird as well. Yeah, yeah XP in general is weird. Like I feel like with the new items I don't know. Perhaps things have changed. If things are the same, then okay, fine, sure. The early, he should be winning. But again, look at this. Arkino is, is losing against He He, but again, legit in, in side lanes, losing is subjective. Like, just not dying could be a big win. Mm -hmm. And it does seem like, you know, uh, at least for us, ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand that in the best of one or round robin where they only meet once, one loss could be really bad for you that, because then you're technically be forced to wait for the results because even if you win all your other games you have to wait for a possible three-way tie 2-1-2-1-2-1 two, one, two, one, two, one. but over the scenes that in the bottom lane shocker unable to get level four chan will be though yeah hide on bush is straight on a turtle penalty zone lock hide on bush down wants to go for the red tree but it's a bit too early nart is the one who picks it up now and that's gonna be hide on bush taken down marquinho trying to look for the trade with the following starm that's gonna be joe with the tempest of blaze onto the back line chan able to flicker out on the lockup but now the eternal guard catches him and it's gonna be marquinho gets taken very very low but he's still able to walk away gets that purify out i would say which i feel like you agree that's a big mistake coming in from Hyde on Bush. He used his retribution way too early, and Gnarr was able to take it. So, Zeno Zenith getting the turtle no and a kill. Yeah, Fury uh, a bit too early with that Purify as well. It seems for Entity 7, that's been the pattern. Hyde on Bush with an early retry. That was an early Purify from Fury. And it might be the Jitters playing on stage, LaFell. This seemed like for Entity 7, aside from Erwin and Chan, I think Erwin and Chan have been great in the early game as well, pushing the tempo. We gotta look at the replay here. Hide on Bush, use the retribution early, and the fact that the uh, revenge strike coming in from he, he, he was able to hit him made it so that he cannot deal enough damage. Now I'm looking at Joe. He had maximum stacks on the war cry. It looks like it still wasn't enough. They spot Joe, they go straight onto him and they burst him down before he can even go for the Tempest of Blades. Nart and Zippy safe up top. Okay, so now I'm really looking at a team. The kill is insane. One to one, hide on Bush gets on Shocker. Oh, Mr. Strike goes through and even the Flicker Shocker. Flicker just doesn't go for the different angle. He walks straight into it, or blinks straight into it rather than the purple buff. This Ling might have to be a very patient Ling in the second minute of the game. Hide on Bush already on it. Now Nart able to get Dying Offenders. That's going to be the Kuno Fury knocking him up as well. Retribution battle is going to be Joe completely decimated. The HP very, very low, but he's still able to get the purple buff. Like compounds by Zippy as Hehe rotates as well. Doesn't have the flicker. Goes for the penalty zone. Onto the Natalia, I'm guessing Hehe will be taken down. A bit of overextension from him. So we saw Entity 7 starting the game with a mistake. They quickly woke up after that and started to play a bit macroly, but in a way that you really enforce your own mechanics. Using the diversion onto the top lane, getting the kill onto the jungler, onto Joe, and after that starts snowballing everywhere. It's like an art finds Erwin, as well as Marquinho. So far, they're, they're, they're feeling fine. Joe is trying to find for an opportunity to go for the turtle. This time, hide on Bush. He needs to make the, uh, the call. If he's not confident with his retribution, might as well go for a fight. Mm -hmm. Bush will be starting off with that turtle. This is turtle number two of the game, the fourth minute. 
So has Retribution. Hey, hey, we'll be able to take the aggro away from him. Thirteen for setting up for him. Marquinho will reveal himself. Goes on to Joe. Takes him to the damage. Nart walking up and offended. Not be able to connect right now. The Eternal Guard will not able, will be able to actually lock him down. Nart very low. Joe goes in. Retro battle. And it's going to be Joe. Steals it with a ton of the blades now. Looking for the assassination off of some of these members. But they are beat, beat boys. And it looks like for the Roger Zippy. With him down into the wall. Goes over to like him. Bounce out. Chasing down. But Tan in the back line was able to find three. Looking for that maniac on the Zippy. The dispersion and the rotation. He needs to land a Zippy. Gets out with the Lycan form. Gets brought back. No, very low again. Give it the chase down, Zippy still able to escape with just one HP. And Entity 7, they turn the tide of the game. Dude, Chan is nothing short of amazing with the Lu Yi. Having almost 100% kill participation, 8 kills in total. Chan is able to participate in 7 of them. Oh! Good, I'm offended, getting him out of the diversion, but no follow up, no pure damage here. Only just a curse blast and a terrify. And for Xeno, Zenith, they'll have to make the game or force it to be a bit slower. Lycan pounds over to the gold buff, and he will be able to claim that gold crab. I saw the first I uh, the item on Hide on Bush, and it looks like he's going for a tank here, Dire of here, where his first item is the blade armor. So so he's really thinking that he has enough damage from the kit of a Dire, so he's going for full defense to make sure that he doesn't go down to Zippy, he doesn't go down to Joe, even uh, able to survive the damage from Hehehe. He he. And now we're going to look at the replay here, where we got to figure out how did Joe manage to go in. It looks like he was able to just instantly burst it down. It looks like using the Retribution at the same time, Zippy was so low. And we know that Chan wants to go for it at Maniac. But again, Chan, I feel like, is in danger at this point because he has four kills. So the moment he gets taken down and I feel like Joe will go, go after Chan, that is going to be a big swing in terms of gold. Okay, three man diver to the bottom lane again. Let's give me Hehe who gets targeted down with the Abyssal Strike 2. Hide on Bush, taking that kill away. And look at the timing, perfectly timed for the turtle. Third one to spawn in the game. Yeah, five kills to hide on Bush. That is amazing. Entity 7, they're moving as a unit, making sure that whenever they go for the kills, they have the majority number. Either three or four is completely fine. And it's enemy, they're playing for the objective. It's Fury, but a three man eternal guard stops on the attack. They're going in, Erwin will actually be caught there as well. Takes a bit too many of the turret shots, but hide on Bush will at least be able to secure their first neutral objective of the game. And that's an interesting fact, right? The fact that Entity 7, 9 to 3, but since the turtle hide on Bush, jumping on the Nart. No one is able to stay in a missile strike, bursting him down, Nart! Taking down, falling, Star Moon to take him out as now it's gonna be Zippy on the run. Back on the Lycan form, good. Penalty zone with the flicker comboed in. Joe now jumps over to the Vine Blade, and that's a curse blast as well. Hide on Bush, taken out by Zippy with the Sky Piercer. Fury, even though he wasn't big in that team fight, he has the Golden Staff now, and feeling he only needs the Demon Hunter story. So Entity 7, they're about to hit their critical point where Fury has three items. Zippy, I'm, I'm unsure of the item build that he is building. I didn't catch the items that he has already completed. But either way, Entity 7 has 10 kills over to Zeno Zenith's four. It looks like they're going for Makinio. So able to survive. That's a diversion as well. Just gonna get some backup here with Erwin and Chan. Even a Spear of Destruction landing. I don't think he wants to take it. He does actually. Rotate to the bottom lane. Erwin looking for the cut. Doesn't have the flicker, so no real engage here. Chan, again, has been amazing at controlling the uh, Xeno Zenim as well as um, actually dealing quite a lot of damage. It enables Hide on Bush because, again, one of the weaknesses of using a fighter inside the jungle is straight up crowd control. But if your team is able to set it up so that you can go in cleanly, making it so that you don't take a lot of damage, you don't get uh, crowd control, then your your jungler is gonna look amazing. And Hide on Bush has made some mistakes. With the KDA 5, 2, and 3, it looks amazing because of Chan as well as Erwin, where both of them have mm -hmm. participated in eight fights. Diversion again, straight into Joe. So able to pop a Temple Blaze now with a knockup as well as Ivan Finnick connects, and that's gonna be the penalty zone in the back line. But Zippy isn't able to go for the Lycan Pounce. Now he does. Hide on Bush trying to get rid of Nart, but he gets the Dono Wolf King. And in the back, it's gonna be Zippy, who is forced back again. Now with the dispersion and the Spear of Destruction, Fury connects it down. And in the mid lane, they go in between the base turret and the tier two, taking the fight and taking a tier two turret. Now I feel like your initial idea is to get the Lord. Hide on Bush is very, very low, so they gotta burst it down very fast. Don't let it stay longer than eight seconds. Because four, five, six. He'll be fine. He'll, he'll be fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. He's on timing. 
I think, you know, we've, we've been talking about how that's very, very important for some of these uh, junglers to burst and to commit. As long as you look for a fight, that removes the, the threat of the Lord actually dealing damage to you. You can actually burst it down. And the Moscow, both games that we've seen it at least, has been more proactive than the Roger. Oh, yeah, definitely. And the Roger's first pick, bro. Maybe, like, after the nerf on a passive of the Roger, mm. is no longer a winning matchup. Now we're looking at items here. Sky Piercer as well as Endless Battle. I feel like when he's down in gold, perhaps Sky Piercer into a win token might be a little bit better, yeah. having more movement speed, having more damage overall. The Roger has three completed items. Oh, man. And, again, looking at the Dire of his full defense. Doesn't seem like there's a Sky Piercer for the Ling. Uh, as well, so if he goes for Berserker's Fury, I think it's because early on it, he was struggling, yeah. so going for the Sky Piercer might not be a lot of value. He goes for the Haas Claws just for sustain. And after this, probably going for the Endless Battle. Now the Lord... Oh, looking at the bottom, there's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. Wanted to go for Zippy, but he's still able to just dash away. So you know Zenith doing a good job of the defense, by the way, clearing out all these waves. And Entity 7 won't really be able to look for a full Lord advantage, but this one they're still holding on to a big gold lead. I feel like it's because in NTD7, they don't really have a clear way to engage. The best way to engage is a Flicker of Minimum Fury by Erwin. But as long as Shocker positions himself well, then he can actually counter with the uh, Eternal Guard, then the engage coming in from NTD7 might not be good. So if NTD7 is able to force out the Eternal Guard early so that it doesn't disrupt their team fight formation, then it's, it's just going to be Gnarr, which again, Gnarr can actually cause problems for Entity 7 whenever they do want to engage, but you got to take down options and you got to be proactive somehow. Looks like Entity 7, they're not going to force the situation. It is the best of one. They, want, they don't want to make mistakes, so they're just going to wait for well the done, team. So they're freezing the lanes, trying to prevent Xenozen from getting more farm and then perhaps forcing them to make a mistake. But I kind of feel like if you want to force them to make a mistake, someone's got to be the bait. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be really tough right now for Xeno Zenith because looking at their composition, I'm thinking, all right, what are the ways that they can go and win this game and come back from this uh, spot? 7,000 gold deficit. And it's still going to be tough. Obviously, Zippy and Joe will be able to deal a lot of damage in the late game, but I think even for MP7, their scaling is really good. They got Fury, they got Marquinho on that Esmeralda. They have initiation while also having some reactive maneuvers with the Minotaur. And it's actually a very, very complete draft. We, our curse might not work on NDV7. Now it's going to be the Conceal. Hey, with the Vanilla Zone, catches 10, even with the Flicker. And now he's going to dive with Joe as well. The Diversion, not in time, but he's still trying his best to escape. Aaron falls as well. Now Joe jumps in a bit too aggressively. Flicker by Nard and right into the Lycan Pounce from Zippy to claim a triple kill. A team fight now as Hide Push goes to the Vision Strike onto four members, but will be caught down with a Terrify. Zippy's still able to survive now as Marquinho goes to look for a fight. But in the 1v4, I don't think he can win this. Yeah, because in my head, honestly, before that fight, I had a question where can Joe potentially 1v5 and 7 Because that's one of the things that, uh, that's great about Ling. You can 1v5. But Marquino, it looks like without the Ling, they might not have enough damage. The only way that I can see they will have enough damage is if it's Zippy uses his human form, chunk him down low enough so that they can execute him. Let Joe use the lethality to get that stack. But again, Joe does not have the stack. He has one kill, but afterwards he died. So it's 4%. And at this stage of the game, 4% is not enough. No, not nearly enough to take anyone down. Not yet, but at least for Zippy, it was working really well. He got three kills on the board with that skirmish. And now he should be back on track to the snowball, or at least some of those power items for him, right? And now that the purple or the orange buff is back up, well, Zippy start to take it now, but another Conceal, Nart walking up, gets caught on the Minotauri, not the Eternal Guard as well, but Joe, Joe decides to go in. Nart can be very low, Marquino on the back line, looking for some damage, Joe goes in for the Divine Blades as well, and Zippy will be able to claim a killing spree. That's the Fear of Destruction, now falling on the Zippy into the Invisible Strike of Hide on Bush, as he jumps in deep as well, gets terrified down, Chan, very, very low, still able to survive for a bit, but a head head that's skill one, taken down, now the Falling Star Moon will immobilize head head and it seems for Fury, he's just gonna throw a few more spears to take head head down, but Hide on Bush, he wants that kill. Yeah, and at this point, in 7 they got a question. Do they go for the Lord? Because Joe is still up. Even if he doesn't get the Lord, he can finish them down. And, it, and my mistake, I forgot the one with the Sky Piercer is actually Zippy. So Zippy got a lot of kills, but now the kills is... The moment he gets the death, the, the tax is going to be as good. And look at that damage, man. Man, it does seem like they will be able to commit onto the next Lord as well. 
gonna be an enhanced lord now taken up by Entity 7. Immortality for Erwin too. Now we gotta look at the replay here. The fact that Erwin was able to start things off and able to get the Eternal Guard quite early, which is pretty good. Zippy, this is where it's very crucial. He was able to get the kill, but he was immediately get onto by Hide on Bush. The Hide on Bush able to get a kill onto Zippy. That turns things around because if Zippy was staying in the fight with the lethality proc, he could have potentially wiped out Entity 7. So Hide on Bush, very good targeting. Find Zippy, make him a non-factor. Once Zippy is not in the, ma in the game anymore, even Joe does not have enough damage. He seems now hide on Bush already with a Rose Gold Meteor too. Let's see how they manage these waves because early on their wave management wasn't the best. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a three-wave setup as well. Joe able to hold out in that top side of the map as well from that wave to shove into. He's based right just a good eternal guard to knock Erwin up. The Lord does get a charge down into the mid lane, so there's some damage. Now it's going to be base for number one taken down in the mid lane as they look to work on the bottom side as well. Xeno Zen is still able to clear out that Lord up in the mid lane. And Entity 7 will be able to siege down another base turret down below. 11 minutes in. And Entity 7 here, level 15. So many. I think the timer might be wrong, by the way, right? Enhance already? Either ways, Mirko. You know what? This is not a podcast. I do have to say, Marquino has been showing up with this Esmeralda. We had our doubts, but the Esmeralda is working very, very well. As someone that goes to the back line, it's more of a disruptor. As a front line, as a disruptor, making it so that Xeno and Zenith, their, their team fight formation is not clean. Again. Finding Zippy! Out of all members, having to play Zippy, still able to flick around with the Voice Charm, who catches him in the back into the knockup. Fury kills with Joe, and Nark won't really be able to go for it. I'm offended, tries to go for it onto Erwin. Now with Joe down. In the mid lane, like a counter going through out the waves. Entity 7. Can they actually go for the end here? The waves are still quite far away. Bottom lane will crash first, but Xeno Zenith can constantly go back and forth from the fountain. And get the resources back. Hide on Bush with the jump again. You can see that damage. Shaping the DHS. Now falling Star as well. We'll put the Purify out of that terrifying. No big resources. Ends up just yet. But look at Fury. Staying objective up top. Taking this base turret down. That's another massive advantage for Entity 7. They look for it again. Marquinho. This is far already going for some damage. Eternal Guard as well. That's going to be Zippy. Finding the shot down. Fury very low as well. Now give Zippy with the like and bounce again. But Fury gets the flask of the Oasis from the motivation roar. Trying to run away. Goes. And throws out the Spirit of Destruction, dodges from another, but Joe continues the chase to find a Defiant Blade. Two for one in favor of Xeno Zenith. That was a very good defense coming in from Xeno Zenith. And again, it is all because of Zippy able to get that the lethality. The last one, Joe was able to get a kill for himself. Now the orange buff is available. But looks like Hide on Bush has something to say about that. But he is one against three. He doesn't want to go for it. takes a lot of damage. Good sidestep into the knockup. And now it's going to be Minus Fury from Erwin. Oh my god. Able to completely turn the tide of the team fight. Hide on Bush with the chase. Picks up the double. Shocker secures a purple buff, but right in the chat he goes! Dispersion rotation, one last shot to Shocker. He gets a terrified down with a passive. Now Chan able to walk away from that penalty zone. Oh, heh heh. Chan still very low, looking to go for these waves, though. He's just super many waves pumping together. Erwin taking that knock up down. The heh heh, the dispersion and the rotation with a whole lot of damage, and Chan might be able to get rid of heh heh now. Is that the final rotation to take him down? Shocker, one man versus the world. It's Erwin who's recalling in front of him. Two tanks, one mage, and now it seems for Shocker, he won't be able to go for the defense. All the mini waves stacked up together. Entity 7, take town, Xeno Senate. You know what? We had the conversation whether the uh, the Louis was still worth a ban. And again, even with the nerf for the diversion, the yin-yang reaction is still a big threat. A lot of damage, a lot of crowd control. So.